is the Times Chief Sports Correspondent. Uh, hello, Matt. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Sam. Uh, thanks for coming on the programme. How big an issue is this? Well, it, we don't know yet. Um, and I don't think the German FA know because they, because what I discovered yesterday, which prompted the piece, uh, and it was by talking to the British police who are here, the, the UK football policing guys, they were aware that um, the FA and the German FA were aware a few weeks ago that fans might be trying to do this. But they were, they were, when they were buying their tickets, they were filling them in with their British addresses, their English addresses. And there were efforts being made to cancel those tickets. However, by yesterday, what the police became aware of was the fact that they got wise to the fact that by simply using their hotel addresses, which is what I did, uh, so I bought. I on. I arrived here on Sunday night. I joined. I became an official member of the uh, German Supporters Club uh, on the uh, on, on the on the uh, on the on the DFB website, which is very easy to do. I gave the address of the hotel I'm sitting in now, uh, and 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 I and I've been a member ever since. Uh, and I purchased the ticket. I, I had to pay a bit more than the guys that Faye spoke to. I had to pay forty five euros yesterday. So they don't know about they don't know what sort of numbers have managed to do this. Um, but um, I did hear of one newly promoted Premier League club a group of, of fifty who have managed to sit together tonight. Have managed to get tickets together tonight. So I think there will be groups. I think they will move around. I think the concern will be, and again, talking. I, I spent all day following the fans yesterday with the police, um, and I think the concern is that. What they will try and do, because there are empty seats or there's expected to be empty seats tonight, um, that they will try and move even... They, they won't necessarily sit where they've been allocated and they will try and move towards the England end. So that could create a potential problem. Um, but we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see how many have... You know, there was talk a week or so ago about 2,000 ticketless fans coming and if they've all acquired tickets this way and it was very easy to buy a ticket yesterday. Then, then we could have an issue tonight. Matt, I, I understand why people have got concerns, but is there not an argument for saying that as long as England fans behave themselves and act accordingly, sing their songs, don't sing anything offensive, just enjoy watching their team, this should be able to pass off without incident? It, it's not the biggest game in the world. I mean, some people, Kevin De Bruyne, have described the Nations League as a glorified friendly. Isn't it, isn't it a bit of a sad reflection that we're worried that England and Germany fans effectively can't sit in the same stands without getting into a fight. Isn't that based on recent evidence, though? Well, what also is it? Well, why, why, why do we have allocated areas at every football match in every league in the world? You know, what, if, if we don't think it's going to be a problem, what, why do we have a home end and an away end? Well, I, you know, I, I think that is a bit of a sad reflection on the sport because you go to rugby matches, for example, fans can mix together, they can, they can drink in view of the pitch. So are we really still saying that football fans in 2022 can't be trusted? Well, so were you, where were you uh, last July, Alex? Yeah, no, where were you? I, I understand that, although England fans will tell you that, um, you know, those who purchased tickets weren't actually the people who were causing the problems. So maybe there's... Really? You know, the, the two sides to that story, but yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from. I, I just think it's sad that we're we're worried that because England and Germany fans are sat next to each other, it's automatically going to cause problems. I was in uh, Seville for the Europa League final. I was in bars where Rangers fans and, and Frankfurt fans were were mixing. They were singing songs together. There was only one arrest. But by the same token, I was in uh, Frankfurt the, three weeks beforehand uh, with the West Ham fans, and they were being ambushed by Frankfurt supporters. Uh, on different corners throughout Again, the Again, were they Frankfurt the fans with tickets or were they Frankfurt hooligan mobs who attached themselves to the team? Well, either way, it's still football-related violence, isn't it, Matt? And that yeah. is something that is a problem and it's something that dogs the sport. Matt, I, I saw your... Uh... I was in Seville a few years ago with England and I actually came out of a restaurant with a few colleagues and it was about 10 o'clock at night um, and beautiful city. It was October, I think. Uh, it was still about 70 degrees and I was actually remarking to a colleague how lovely it was. There were families out, people pushing prams. And then we turned a corner and suddenly we were met with this scene of the Spanish police on one side and probably 300 England fans on the other side, bottles, chairs, the whole lot, shirts off, being thrown. That was what, I can't remember what year that game was, five, five, five six years ago. 
the fact of the matter is, Alex, I was following, you know, you, you mentioned in your sort of impassioned defence there about, you know, don't sing offensive songs. I must have heard 10 German bombers eight yeah. times. And, and, and the final time, there was a scene, the German policing was very effective yesterday. What they would do is they kept shutting the bars to, to make people then move on and go and find another bar. And why that was effective is it's human nature that when you've then got to go and find a new bar, the, groups, the group reduces in size, it disperses a bit. But they found another Irish bar. There's, there's, there was a particular group. I've got to say, there was probably 5,000 England fans of Munich last night. Four and a half thousand of them just were absorbed by the city. They were great. You saw them sitting in different restaurants, cafes, enjoying Munich. It's a beautiful city. But there was a, there was an element of between, I'd say, three and 500 who were a bit of a problem. And, and they were moving around. And by about 10, 11 o'clock last night, we had a situation in this small square where we had the German police on one side and we had the, the, this, England, this group of England fans on the other side. And they were simply standing there about 30 metres apart, singing 10 German bombers at the German police. A bottle came in and I was stood with the British police and they were like, this is, this is going to go because another couple of bottles and the German police will then, yeah, they were so, they showed such great restraint. But it, was, it got very close to kicking off last night. As it was, they're very intimidating. German riot police, and there were lots of them. And I just think, I think the the English fans were were, were wise enough to realise that if they did push it any further, it was it was only going to end one way. Where does this culture come from, then? Because this is something that's dogged English football for a long time. Not dogged English football, but it is an element of English support where yeah. they feel as if they can hark back eighty years and start talking about well, where where does that come from? Have we not moved on from that? And why? I suppose the other problem is is that you have ninety thousand people that go to watch a game at Wembley, and 500, 500 people do end up causing this sort of social disorder, then the whole group gets a bad reputation. That's right. And, and that's what saddens me, Matt. Not so much that you've highlighted the story, because I think it is a story, and I think there are obvious concerns. The question I'm asking is why there have to be concerns, because it is a minority, although quite a big minority, from the numbers you've just given us, that as an Englishman and as an English football fan that just give the rest of us a bad name and, and continue to do so. But Mate, that's something I... for the fans to be responsible for. The fans have got to self-police, haven't they? Yes, they have. Because otherwise, mm. they're gonna, they, this situation isn't going to come to an end. Uh, before we ask that question, you know, I must ask you about this possibility um, of the German FA cancelling some of the tickets. Is that still on the agenda? You said you've spoken to them overnight. Well, if they can identify the clearly... You know, the tickets have clearly been purchased by English fans. Uh, that that'll be the problem. And and I guess I guess if the if the fifty fans from the one club have all put the same hotel address, that might be a bit of a giveaway. <laughs> but that might cause more problems than actually so than it solves, won't it? <laughs> exactly. So they either all live in a very large house and it's this wonderful football supporting commune, or uh, or they've all used the hotel address. Um, but no, I think the, the challenge will be, Sam, will be identifying them. That'll be the problem. Um, you know, my, my, mine's a bit of a giveaway if they did study mine. I've actually given, well, I've emailed the German FA and told them that they can have the ticket back, they can resell it, do what they want with the money. Um, but, um, I, you know, I, I did it purely to demonstrate a point. Um, um, but um, I, I just don't know how how easy it will be. You're talking about, even if it's only 55,000 of the 7,000, so you've still got to go through 55,000 tickets to, to try and identify which ones have been purchased by England fans. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.